Now another very cool shortcut that has been there for a long time and that a lot of people don't know about, okay? And that is very excited to share with you my top favorite Cubase shortcuts. Hey, what's going on? Chris here from Mixdown Online. And before we jump in, if you're new here on this channel, feel free to subscribe to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, if you love this video, you think the video is helpful and you want to help me out, you can share and like this video. All right, so now I'm going to share with you my top favorite Cubase shortcuts and also some MIDI shortcuts and hotkeys as well. So pay attention, those are going to come fast. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and start with the zoom in and zoom out of the project window. I'm going to start by using the G and H keys of my computer keyboard and that will uh, zoom in by clicking on G and zoom out by clicking on H or keeping my finger on H. If I uh, keep my finger on shift and use the same keys G and H that will zoom in and out vertically. I can also uh, just drag and drop from the top here my mouse and that will zoom in and out. Not super precise, but it, you know, it works well for quick zooming purposes. And also I can use my control, keep my finger on control and use my mouse wheel. Okay. That will also zoom in and out according to where my mouse location is. And this is very practical. So by keeping my finger on uh, control or command if you're on Mac, that will zoom in and out. And if I keep my finger on shift and do the same with the mouse wheel, that will go from left to right. Another very practical shortcut that I use all the time. Okay, now if I want to get back to my full size project, what I can do is keep my finger on shift and F and that will bring me to a full size view of my project. Now, if I select this electric guitar track and I want to zoom in on this one, I click on Z or Z depending on where you are in the world and uh, this will zoom in that selected track. Now, by clicking on control and the up and down keys, that will zoom in and out that selected track. Only using the up and down arrow will just go from one track, one channel to the other, that simple. Now, if I want to set up my left and right locators, uh, I can go on top and keep my finger on control and that will set up the left locator. And by keeping my finger on alt and clicking on top, that will set up the right locator. I can also select one event or several events, click on P and that will set up the left and right locators according to my event selection. And if I select one event and I click on Alt and then P, that will set up the left and right locators of that selection and it will activate the loop cycle at the same time and start playing that loop right away. So that's a very practical one. Now let's continue with the range selection tool, which is uh, this tool on top by clicking on uh, that tool or clicking on two on your keyboard, you're going to get the range selection tool. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do with the range selection tool, but let's say um, I just want to take that selection and cut that selection into its own event. I use the range selection tool, select my selection, click on shift and X, and that will split that event and cut that event into its own event, which is pretty nice. I use that all the time when editing, very useful. I can also uh, add several fades at the same time by selecting the end events of several, uh, several events and by using the range selection tool again. And by clicking on uh, A, that will, that will add a fade to range. Okay. So this is also very practical and you can do the same at the beginning of an event also. Now, another very cool shortcut that has been there for a long time and that a lot of people don't know about. Okay. And that is this one by selecting again, the uh, range selection tool. Uh, let's say I just want to cut that part. If I cut that part right away, I'm going to be left with an empty space. And then I'm probably going to have to bring the following, the next event to uh, the end of uh, this one. So there's a faster way to do so, which is called ripple delete in some softwares like Premiere. Uh, but this one is called time delete, I believe, or delete time or whatever. So uh, click on uh, the range selection tool. You select the, uh, the space you want to delete. And by keeping your finger on shift, 
and click on delete. That will delete without leaving any empty space, which is very practical, especially if you're, um, if for example, you're, uh, you're, you're editing a podcast or something that is going to speed up your workflow like crazy. You can also select several tracks altogether or several events and do the same shift and delete. And that is going to delete without leaving an empty space, which is quite practical in some situations. Now by clicking on F3, that will bring the mix console. I use that all the time. And by clicking again on F3, I'm going to go back to my project window because um, it's going to close down the mix console. If I want to open the mix console at the bottom in the lower zone, I just keep my finger on Alt, click on F3 again, and that will um, bring my uh, mix console in the lower zone. And since we're in the lower zone, um, we have several views of the lower zone uh, in the mix console tab. We have the fader view, the insert view, and the send view. So I can select those different views by clicking on them, but I can also keep my fingers on Alt and and control and using my up and down arrows. And that will allow me to go from one view to the other. And also at the bottom, we have different tabs that goes from mix console, editor, sampler control, and chord pads. Instead of clicking, I can do the same, uh, keep my fingers on uh, control and alt and go from the uh, from left to right with the arrow keys. And that is gonna allow me to go from the mix console to editor and so on. Now the numpad on my computer keyboard is a section that I use a lot. Uh, sometimes I use my PreSonus fader port as a controller, but I can also use my numpad to start a recording, to, uh, to rewind, you know, to rewind or forward, start playing, uh, stop playing, like, like I was saying, start the recording. Um, and then I can also, uh, and this is something that I use a lot when I have a bunch of markers on top, I can um, get directly to a specific marker by using those keys, those number keys on the numpad on the right side of the computer keyboard. So this is a section that I would suggest you to, uh, to learn and working with that section of the computer keyboard increases my workflow like crazy. Then we have J, uh, J on top is gonna activate the uh, snap to grid. And then we have, if we have like two events that are overlapping, we can uh, select both of those events, click on X and that will crossfade those two events. Very fast way to do some crossfades when you're, uh, you're editing. Auto scroll is F. If I click on F, that will activate the auto scroll. So what the auto scroll is, very simple, I'm just gonna click on play. And this is what the auto scroll will, will do if I activate it. Now F6, I'm going to get directly to my automation panel if I need to, but the one that I use a lot is F7 if I have, uh, if I want to add some effects on a specific audio event that will open the direct offline processing window by just clicking on F7. Metronome is C. And again, this is a shortcut that is very useful when recording just to activate the click on and off by clicking on C. Copy pasting an event, after that same event, just click on Control D and that will paste it, you know, as far as you click on Control D, okay? Or you can just keep your finger on Control D and that will just continue pasting that event until you stop clicking, that's it. So very practical, it's a very fast way to just copy paste uh, a single event or just a bunch of events all together. Okay, now let's look at some MIDI shortcuts that are very, very practical. Uh, first of all, if you want to just write some notes right off the bat, uh, you can select the, um, the draw tool, but you can also just keep your finger on Alt and start writing down some notes, okay? That's simple. You don't need to select the draw tool to do so. If I want, I can select all of my MIDI notes and bring down all of those uh, velocity all at once, and this will proportionately bring them down. I can also, by clicking on uh, Control and Shift, and select one, uh, one MIDI note, I can bring the velocity down of that single MIDI note or several MIDI notes at the same time. Even all of them if I want to. Now, another very cool shortcut here is if I want to split several notes or only one note, for example, if I want to use that bass note to, uh, to, be, uh, to be a bass line, you know, um, and split that up into eight separate notes within that one bar. What I can do here is to set up my, uh, my quantized preset to an eighth of a note, okay, and use my scissors. 
And instead of cutting that note on every eighth note, you know, what I can do is to just select that note, uh, use my scissors, click on Alt, and then click on that first subdivision. And there you go. It will cut everything by itself uh, to an eighth of a note. Okay, so this is a very fast way to split that up into several uh, separate notes. So if I have a sixteenth of a note uh, on top in my quantize preset, and I want to do the same, but with 16 notes instead, I just select my first subdivision, click on Alt and Cut, and there you go. If I want to just cut that up into eight different notes within that bar, uh, but I'm still at one sixteenth of a note, what I just do is just select the second subdivision, do the same, click on Alt and Cut, and that will cut that uh, selected note into eight different note. It's going to split that up, which is pretty easy. You can also do this on MIDI or audio events straight from the project window, which is quite nice. I'm just finishing editing the video and Marcus from Pound Sound just released a video talking about that feature specifically. So go watch that video. It's a pretty cool one. And also check out Marcus Pound Sound's YouTube channel. Pretty cool channel. Now next on top here we have the length quantize, which is going to give us the length of a note when uh, writing a note down. The length of that note is going to be an eighth of a note. If I bring that up to a 32nd of a note, it is, you, you'll see that the note is going to be way smaller. Okay. Now I have a shortcut to change those values. If I keep my finger on Alt and I use my top numbers on the top of my keyboard, that is going to browse between those different uh, values. Okay. So from, uh, if I click on uh, five, it's going to, it's going to bring up a sixteenth of a note as far as the length quantize goes. Okay. So I, I can easily select those different values by keeping my finger on Alt and use my top numbers numbers on the top of my keyboard. Now if you want to set up your own shortcuts, what you need to do is to click on edit, go down to key commands. If you're not using Cubase 10, you will find the key commands under file, okay? But in Cubase 10, it's under edit. And that will bring up the key commands window and from that point on, you'll be able to customize the shortcuts that are already in place by default in Cubase or just create some new ones that are not allocated to anything. Like for example, um, if I look here on the uh, quantize preset, which is again something that I use a lot, which will change the quantize value of the grid. Okay, so if I want to change that, there's no shortcut by default to do so, opposed to the length quantize. But I'm going to set one up in case I'm going to click on edit, go down to key commands. I'm going to look for quantize and it's going to be down under quantize category, under select next quantize or previous quantize. This is the one I used. Okay. You can also do the same as the uh, default shortcut that we have with the length quantize and set up like a different key for each different values. But the way I set it up was to just go up and down a value. Uh, so I set it up to Alt plus. So keeping my finger on Alt and using the plus and minus on the top of my keyboard. Okay. So by doing so, I just, the only thing I need to do is to just keep my finger on Alt, uh, click on plus or minus, and that will change the quantize preset. At the same time, by keeping again my uh, finger on Alt, I can also play with the top uh, quantize length values, okay, on top of that. All of this, you know, in a very fast and efficient way. Now, there's way more shortcuts in Cubase that I could have shown you, but those are my top favorite shortcuts. Now, what I want you guys to do is to share what are your favorite shortcuts or if there's any shortcuts that I didn't mention on this video, please share those in the comments section down below. So this is going to be it for this video and I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like the video. And again, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. All right, my friends, until next time, see ya.